And welcome back to the Out of the Park Developments channel. My name is Alex Murray, also known as AZ Axel, and welcome to another Science Saturday here. What is it now? October 3rd. Oh, dear me. Time has flown. It feels like it was just yesterday when we got this entire project started. 
Welcome everybody back to the channel for episode five of the Backyard Project. We're entitling this episode The Winds of Windsor. And the date today is October 3rd in real life. And in the game, the date is only July 1st. But if you guys remember correctly, we only have about, what is it, 36 games? 37 games or so? <laughs> Very funny. Uh, good grief. Uh, but yes, we have a shortened season for our project, so it is unfortunately coming to an end for for the regular season. We only have eight games left. Check that. Only seven games left because I got antsy and I wanted to see how the teams performed on Jul July uh, 1st. So I, I may have accidentally watched a bunch of games before you guys. So we'll see what happens. Uh, <laughs> but anywho, welcome back again, ladies and gentlemen, to another Science Saturday. Again, my name is Alex Mary, also known as AZ Axel. I am the tech support moderator, manager, slash quality assurance person for Out of the Park Developments. And my job, my job on these Science Saturdays is to promote the game in different ways that TJ, Chris, and Rich do not promote the game. And that is giving you guys little bits of pieces of information, tidbits of fun facts, and also helpful guides on how to better not only understand, but test out OOTP in all aspects. Basically, I do everything non-PT. That is correct. I, I, basic, I am basically the, the complete opposite of Chris. If Chris is full-on PT, I'm pretty much full-on single-player. Um, and watch, like, half of the people and chat, like, oh, is this in PT? Okay, we'll go back to our... No, I'm just kidding. But we actually have done some PT-related content as well. Uh, one of our biggest videos we've ever done from Science Saturday has been the Catcher's comparison stream where we basically compared catchers and would a hitting catcher overpower a defensive catcher in terms of you know being better for your P pt team or whether or not you know the catcher's defense would enable your pitchers to do better and we went a we went a about a two hour stream looking deep into that and i don't even remember what the full-on reports were that we came up with but i remember it was mixed it was a mixed bag you could go with either basically i think is what the answer was but we kind of also decided that catcher defense i think we decided catcher defense was more important just by a slimmer of a difference now that was before we had all the amazing people that got entered into pt that are both good hitters and good catcher catching catchers so you know hey there is that was back when it was like, yeah, Mike Piazza and Yogi Berra were your best catchers. Sorry, I'm just going to be getting into the, uh, the uh, backyard project in a second here. I just wanted to make sure we got an intro here real fast for you guys. But yeah, that's kind of stuff we've been doing. So this is the backyard project. And I guess now we can go ahead and switch on over. So there we go. This is the backyard project. It is a project based on the importation of the video game Backyard Baseball, which was a late 1990s to early 2000s video game for the Mac and PC. I played it a ton in my childhood, as did many other people who grew up in the 90s and 2000s. It was a point-and-click game that was all about baseball, and it was one of the best games of its time. That was right before, like, EA Sports came out with, you know, the really good MVP baseballs. Um, yeah, it was also on Game Boy Advance. They actually did port it over to mobile consoles as well. Would you be adding some more in real-life players in Season 2? That is actually a good question, Kazumi. Um, there is an option to add more real-life players to the game. What we may end up doing is looking at potentially importing modern players. I might be looking at some of the, like, Mike Trouts and Fernando Tatis Juniors, um, because I feel like if we were going to redo Backyard Baseball and do it today, those are the players we'd import. It would be Vladdy, you know, it'd be Vlad Jr., uh, Tatis Jr., I would say probably. I would probably pick one person from each team, and we may import, like, the best of the best or the, the faces of the teams as of today. We may end up doing that. Brock Holt just for fun. <laughs> I don't I don't know about that. Uh, but we'll see. Anywho, guys, we've got a lot to get through today. So let's jump right into this, all right? We have 
eight games left for every single team. And unfortunately, as you can see, I already played through the uh, the day of July 1st. So let's go ahead and show off the standings and the statistics and everything at this point. So boom, there you guys go. The Toronto Giants defeated the Lansing Robins on July 1st. That was Pounder over Potter. Goats lost to the Warlocks in 10 innings. That was an extra inning matchup right there. That was a fun one to watch. They actually had a walk-off. Or no, no, they tied it in the ninth inning on a home run. So that was fun. A 22 strikeout game. Yes, that is the one I am very interested in having you guys take a look at. The, uh, the Manatees lost to the Ducks. So that would brought both of those teams down to 16 and 11. The Memphis Kings won on a walk-off in the 10th inning over the Swatters. The Swatters had a great chance to upset the top-seeded team in the league. And then the Centennial Squirrels upended the Windsor Whistlers, who were on a seven-game winning streak. This was a seven-game winning streak team. They were 15 and 11. The Centennial Squirrels looking to get back to 500 as the Whistlers dropped to 15 and 12. Uh, the players have not been added to the league yet. They will be available for season two's, excuse me, for season two's fantasy draft. What will be happening is we'll be adding players during the off season for season two, and then they will be in another fantasy draft right before the beginning of the season. I do have to add more teams, make adjustments, import the, the, uh, you know, the logos and the stadium. There's a lot of other work that has to get done. Players created in Season 1 are allowed to carry over to Season 2. I think that's going to be the answer. Um, I know a lot of you guys are interested in hearing what we're going to be doing about players and all that kind of stuff. But at the moment, I think what's going to happen is anybody who got submitted in Season 1 is going to be imported directly into Season 2 unless directed by the person who submitted it to be either deleted and resubmitted or to be edited. So I'm working on a new form. I'm working on a new form that's going to be much more detailed in terms of allowing you guys to have more hands-on control over your players. Um, well, I mean, for like the Orioles, we might actually do something like an Adley Rushman. We might actually do him and then just import his his uh, his, his his best version. Um, otherwise, it would be Austin Hayes. I think those two players are the faces of the Orioles outside, of course. Well, no, no, no. Tigers got um, the Tigers got Torkelson, but uh, yeah, we would we would be looking for younger people. Although, of course, the Nationals would import Max Scherzer. I mean, who else would they be importing? But anywho, the Bismarck Mythics lost in the ninth inning to the Portland Pioneers, who ended up bringing both of their teams to twelve and fifteen. So, unfortunately, not a good performance uh, from the Mythics. They continue to fall apart. Oh, that's true. Juan Soto. I didn't even think about him. Yeah, that'd be that'd be good too. I could go for Juan Soto or for Max Scherzer. Yeah, the uh, Virginia Beach captains won an extra innings after giving up the the uh, the lead in the ninth to the Kansas City Cluckers. So the the Virginia Beach captains moved to sixteen and eleven, and then the Queens Nobles upended the Houston Apollos eight to two at home. The Nobles are like I think they're either eight and two or they're nine and two at home. Let me see. At home they're twelve and two. My apologies. The uh, the uh, the Nobles have been amazing when it comes to their home field advantage. It has been phenomenal for them. And then the last game was the Koalas versus the Marmots, and this was the big one. This is the one that I had absolutely no expectations for until I saw the box score, and I was like, 22 strikeouts. 22 strikeouts for Juan Villegas. This gives him, I believe, the lead in the Backyard Baseball League or the Backyard Project with, um, yes, 181 strikeouts. A 106-game score, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's Backyard Baseball? Backyard Baseball was a game made back in the late 1990s to early 2000s. Involved a bunch of these backyard baseball kids playing pickup ball in the backyard, basically. It was a point-and-click baseball game. Very, very cool. Very, very cool game. A lot of people played it. I played it personally. Um, it was a childhood memory for me. 
Where's the link to the stats through last week? Uh, there should have been... Let me see. There should have been... So, for anybody who doesn't know, I've been exporting the statistics for every single time we simulate. There it is. Back on uh, September 26th, 26th, I uploaded the stats. It's called TBP9 underscore 26. It's an Excel spreadsheet. It has every single statistic that is, you know, most important for anyone to look at. So, if you've got a player, if you have a player in this league... That was only last week. Uh, that's yeah, that should have been last week's. This feels like it's been 16 years. <laughs> I know it feels like we've been doing this for a while, but that was only last week. Like it feels amazing how long each week we have to wait for this stream just to get a couple more weeks of this league simulated. Like we simulate so much, and it's so much. But oh. You're actually referencing that game. I am. Yes, we imported the players. I wish I could have imported the actual stadiums. Um, unfortunately, what we decided to do, because I couldn't get the stadiums imported, we imported custom 3D stadiums instead, but they are full-fledged ballparks because, in the end, we aged the kids up. We had to, okay? It was just... It, it felt weird when you had people... You know, I mean, technically, I have pictures for every single person in the league besides, of course, all of the, you know, custom players who have, like, mustaches. But we, we imported, like, 39-year-old, you know, Tony Gwynn Sr. And it looks kind of weird to have him have a mustache at 39 and then playing along Shovel Bryant, who would have been, well, like, 13 at that point. So, uh, yeah. We, we aged the kids up. Yeah, imagine the strike zone for the little guys, especially like Pablo Sanchez. Can you imagine what Pablo Sanchez's like strike zone would have been? It would have been like half a foot. Like literally, it would have been like the smallest little, like maybe a foot at most strike zone. It would have been bad. So we aged the kids up. We made it all appropriate for like really, really young baseball. So imagine that the kids have all kind of grown up about 10 or 15 years. Eddie Goodell would have been jealous. Yes, I think Eddie Goodell was about the same height as Pablo was in the baseball game for uh, for backyard baseball. So, anywho, these are the standings for this week, ladies and gentlemen. As we move into the end of the regular season, we have seven seven games left, and the Warlocks are still in it because of their victory. Uh, are we not going to get to improve players? There is going to be an option about that. I need to, I need to do some investigation into why I would allow people to do an improved players option because some people could use an improvement, some people could not. So it might be an invitation only. Um, if we have two characters of the same name, what happens? Uh, if you mean, do you have two submissions of the same name? Because you're only allowed to make one submission. If someone submits the same character name as somebody else, uh, I will try to get in contact with e either one of them and uh, and make that changed. Otherwise, most likely than not, the, uh, the nicknames are probably going to be different uh, at the least. So most of the time, we haven't had the same person submitted twice in terms of like player names but uh someone else submitted the same character later oh oh okay i mean that's a interesting question i'd have to look into that to be honest i was gonna say like one or two point improvements off our original submissions um the problem is that i'm gonna be moving to a new form that's gonna be a little bit more hopefully a little bit more uh a little bit more restricting on how well you can make your player in one aspect. Um, yes, there are past vi uh, past videos of our streams. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten them up on the uh, YouTube channel for OTP. They are currently on my YouTube channel right now. They are huge. They are they're two hour plus videos. So watch them at your own discretion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. DM me and uh and we can look at stuff as well. If you guys have duplicates, I'd be more than happy with that. So yeah, I'll have more information, guys, about what season two will look like. I'll probably have information about that next week because we'll be doing playoffs next week. And we'll uh we'll definitely need to start preparing for season two. There will be a small gap between 
season one's finishing and season two beginning there will be it will be basically like a uh, like a tv show we're gonna have a little bit of a period of time where i can work on the league get stuff fixed get stuff resolved work through some issues and then submit the new players get everything reset up and ready to go um and then we'll be able to get started with that let me just get a link for you guys really fast because i know i've got it here like this is let me get you episode one Episode one was all about the, whoops, I don't want that. I don't want to open it, I want to copy it. There we go. Episode one was the draft and everything involved with that. So I know I probably shouldn't be technically promoting my own personal YouTube, but I'll get it up on the OTP YouTube soon. I just, I, I really need to ed edit them if I can. I'd like to edit them before I put them up there. Otherwise, they're so long. They're just so long. Episode 1 was amazing to watch, but it was so long. It was almost, I think it was about three hours. So, <laughs> the suspense was cool. The, the draft is cool. I think what will happen next time in Season 2 is either we're going to run through the draft, or we may even pet the draft into like two parts. I don't know. We'll see. So, anywho, guys, I'll have more information about Season 2. I'll have more players more information, more data about Season 2, probably next week. And um, that'll also... It was the record before the tournament Saturday. <laughs> yes, it was. It was the longest stream we'd ever had until the Saturday where we basically beat it because of the tournament and then did another Backyard Baseball tournament or a Backyard Baseball stream on top of that. It would be neat to, it would be neat to have custom players in Season 2 for the Hall of Famers that have passed away this year. I would love to do that. I would love to be able to honor some of the people who have passed away this year, or even in the past couple of years. I think that'd be really cool. We could even do like a, we could do our own um, our own release content on who we're adding into the game. <laughs> it might confuse a lot of people, but we technically could do that. We could totally add in like yeah, 68 Gibson and a bunch of other stuff. We could call it the Backyard Project content content pack or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We're getting sidetracked, and that's not good. We've already spent 20 minutes talking about stuff. We gotta get going. All right. So, let's continue on to the next day. To our next game of the day. So, this is our gonna be our uh, pitcher number twos for every single team. Every single team has got two starting pitchers. They have to throw both pitchers. So, unfortunately, this is gonna be where everybody starts to struggle a little bit more. Um, we're going to be seeing the Mythics versus the Goats, the Squirrels versus the Pioneers, so a couple of the low-end teams going at it right there. But then the Warlocks have to take on the Manatees. Oh, boy. The Ducks take on the Koalas, the Kings are taking on the Marmots, and the Apollos are taking on the Giants. And on top of that, we're going to see the Cluckers versus the Swatters. Ooh, the Nobles versus the Whistlers. Oh, that's going to be a fun one right there. And then the Robins are going to be away at the captains. All right, let's see what happens, guys. Again, we're looking at about one game before I think the Warlocks are eliminated. I think they'd be our first team eliminated from playoffs. So we'll have to see what happens. For the first game of the, of the day, Alex Rodriguez and the Bismarck Mythics came out slugging. Two home run performance for Alex Rodriguez as they defeat Durham 11-1. A resounding butt whooping to the goats from the Bismarck Mythics. That pretty much knocks the goats. I think that might put them out of the playoff contention at this point. That loss is disastrous for the goats. The squirrels and pioneers. Let's see what they can get done. The squirrels will lose it. They score two runs in the top of the ninth. But they can't defeat Mike Piazza, his two home runs, four RBIs, and the six runs total for the Portland Pioneers are just immaculate at this point. As the Pioneers move to 13 and 15, and the Squirrels drop to 13 and 15. Oh, good. Drops are happening. Awesome. And EV Cine C2 is gone. Yeah, that happens a lot, unfortunately. All right, the Manatees do not want to lose this game right here. They've got Kenny Kawaguchi versus Ramona Bennett, and they do win it. The Warlocks have defeated the Manatees 7-2. to two. They moved to 17-11. and 11. The Warlocks are now 8-20, and 20, 
and they have been eliminated from playoffs. Our first team to be eliminated from playoffs is the Salem Warlocks. They are definitely not doing well. Let's just say the Warlocks have not had a very good season. The Downy Ducks and the Kanata Koalas. Let's see who can win this game. We're still looking for Pablo Sanchez to have more breakout days. And unfortunately, he does. Actually, he did. Nice. A homer. Number eight for Pablo Sanchez. Puts him on tie with Alex Rodriguez, Chico Pappas, Seth Hoffman. Not near the top of the homers listing, but an 11-6 to destruction of the Downey Ducks. The Ducks fall to 16-12 and as the Koalas get back up to 500. Woo! That is nice. All right. So... Good to see uh, homers for Wheeler, Green, Sanchez, and McBurban. Very nicely done. But the Koalas taking one away from the Ducks. That's going to mess up some of the top parts of our, of our standings at this point. <laughs> Oof. Oh, uh, you're not going to reach back in and back, uh, reach back into Perfect League there, Simple Hunter? Oh, uh, stuck in Diamond for another season. Koalas definitely needed that win. Absolutely. All right. The Kings versus the Marmots. The Kings are probably looking to secure a playoff berth here. They're probably one or two games out. So let's see if they can beat the Marmots. And they do. Five to two. Tim Hudson continues his flawless season. He's now eight and one with a 2.51 ERA. Crockett with her eighth, eighth save of the season. Leah Wayne had her sixth home run for Memphis as they destroy the Marmots who move to 12 and 6. The Memphis Kings are 19 and 9. Everything is clicking for the Kings right now. It's a little bit scary. All right, let's see how yours truly can do. Evan Screwball versus Alex Murray. Apollos versus the Giants. And we won. I got player of the game for it finally. Starting to see some good results from my pitcher at this point, and the Giants take one from the Houston Apollos, 3-2. to two. They move to 12-16, and 16, which is at this point just respectable. <laughs> it's just for the respect of it now. But taking a game from the Houston Apollos is big for the rest of the league. That gives the rest of the league chances to be able to win. Uh, Weber gets the win, Sturgis gets the loss. I ended up going seven and a third inning, 12 strikeouts, three hits, two earned runs, and two walks. Nicely done. The Swatters are going to be home against the Cluckers. They need this win. Shooter McGavin versus Bobby Bullgreen. And the winner is going to be the Louisville Swatters as they have a shared shutout against the Kansas City Cluckers. Tim Gross has his sixth homer of the season, and they win 4 0, moving to 15 and 13. That keeps. The Louisville Swatters in a playoff hunt. That is important right there. Very, very important. All right, the Nobles and the Whistlers. Actually, let's save that one for last. We're going to save that one for last. That's the big one. Yeah, Bull Green probably is going to need to get dumped to the bullpen or something. I, I, I don't think they actually have a backup starter, so they're, they're kind of stuck with him. What's amazing is that he actually hits pretty decently. Three home runs, seven RBIs. Even for the 216 batting average, he has a zero war for hitting. So they could probably put him in like at first base and he'd be a better better player than a starting pitcher. So we'll see. Anywho, second to last game. The penultimate game. The Robins versus the Captains. Let's see if the Virginia Beach Captains can keep going with a Sarsis. Oh, this is right. This is the This is gonna be the first start for Tikojo. We did switch around some of the number two starters. Some teams did make changes because they found out their number two starters were just not cutting it, so they swapped them out. So let's see if Tokojo can do a good job in his first time starting for the Lansing Robins. They desperately need this win to stay out of last place. And unfortunately, he does okay up until about the fourth inning. And the Virginia Beach captains just get all over him. Peters, Guerrero, and O'Connor... Hit home runs as the Virginia Beach Captains win 5-2. They move 
to 17 and 11 as the Robins fall to 10 and 18. All right. The last game for the day. Nobles at the Whistlers. This is Ed Barker versus Maria Luna. And the winner is going to be the Queen's Nobles coming back in the ninth inning. Taking down class. The Whistlers had it all the way. Luna was player of the game, but the Queen's Nobles will burn the Whistlers, who have now lost two in a row. What is this nonsense? <laughs> the Queen's Nobles moved to 16 and 12 putting them near the front of the standings and the Whistlers. Both of these teams came into this simulation extremely, extremely hot. Homer's going to Petrovic and Luna, but the Whistlers drop the game in the ninth inning. Save to Khan, his 12th save of the season. I believe he now leads the league in saves, I believe. So our standings after July 5th look like this. The only team that has been eliminated is the Salem Warlocks. Eric Gagne holds the ERA lead quite soundly. Uh, Jay Green has the lead in wins at 10. Uh, Abenduck still has the war lead. Khan definitely has the save lead of 12. 12 of the... What is that? 12 of the 16 wins for the Nobles have been saved. That's impressive. Jay Mills holds the uh, war leader for hitters. Be uh, behind him, Ken Griffey Jr., and Tony Gwynn Sr. Wow. So this is your standings right here, ladies and gentlemen. A five-game winning streak for the Memphis Kings. The Houston Apollos are on a three-game losing streak. The Queens Nobles are on a three-game winning streak. And the Whistlers, who were 9-1 and one in their past 10 games, are now 7-3 and three after a two-game losing streak. They are now on the verge of being removed from the playoff chase if they do not get this around. Here we go. Here's the magic numbers. That's what I wanted to see. So the Cluckers, Giants, Mythics, Squirrels, Pioneers, all about to be eliminated very soon here. They're all down to, uh, I mean, even the Koalas and Goats are below double-digit playoff percentages. We're looking at basically the Whistlers, Swatters, Nobles, Ducks, Apollos, Captains, Manatees, and Kings. These are your playoff people. And we'll see what happens. Technically, technically, there is still a chance for a couple of these lower end teams. If the if the if teams like the you know the if the Apollos continue to fall and the Ducks continue to fall, you could see one or two teams take places. Now, the problem is you should have been better than the Portland Pioneers by this point, folks. The Portland Pioneers have not done well. Let's just say they started off the season two and seven. And then they went five and four, and then four and four. And now they're two and zero oh in July. So the Portland Pioneers are coming. I mean, don't call it a comeback. So you're saying there's a chance? Yes. <laughs> yes, I guess. Technically, the Mythics should be fifteen and thirteen right now. That's the bigger problem. The Mythics should be 15 and 13. The Cluckers are supposed to be 14 and 14, but they're not. Both teams have failed miserably so far this season. Some of the teams that have done really well, the Nobles. The Nobles were supposed to be about a 500 team. They are a 571 winning percentage team right now. So, let's keep going. Let us see what happens as the screen flashes for you all. My apologies. Didn't realize it would do that. Here is the updated predictions. With the results of that one day, everybody goes down a little bit. The Mythics are actually up to 1.4 now, so it's recalculating. It recalculates and says there's a little bit more of a chance. Let's see what happens. What is the Mythics... What does the Mythics schedule look like? The Mythics have the Manatees, the Warlocks, the Ducks, the Squirrels, and the Nobles. Three of those teams are very good. And then two of them are really bad. Actually, you have one more game that's not being displayed. But um, I don't know who that last game is against. But either way, I would not like to go up against Randy Johnson, Jay Green, Bosworth. Even Kenny Kawaguchi and Betty Houston are pretty good. So uh, I'm going to be crossing my fingers for the Mythics because I don't think they're going to make it. 
All right. Oh my gosh, that's a big one right off the right off the gate. Right out of the gate, the Apollos versus the Captains are going to start us off. Goats and squirrels, the koalas and the kings, the pioneers and nobles, manatees and the mythics, the whistlers and the giants. We're going to also see the marmots versus the cluckers. Those are two of the bottom feeder teams right about there. But still, one of them could start to make a rally. They have a chance still. Swatters are going to be at the robins and the warlocks are at the ducks. Uh, let's just get that one over with, shall we? Because that's going to be almost... Almost a comeback for the Warlocks as they fall 3-2 to two against the Downey Ducks. It took them 12 innings to get it done, but the Ducks do win that baseball game. They ended up having to use Kenny Kawaguchi as a, as a long relief pitcher. Oh boy, that's that's not good. Um, but uh, yeah, the Downey Ducks moved to 17-12, and 12, and the Salem Warlocks are now 8-21. and 20. When? All right, let's get these games started. Virginia Beach Captains versus the Houston Apollos. Pedro Martinez versus Earl Abbott. And Earl Abbott and the Virginia Beach Captains take it to Pedro. Three to one victory for the B for the Captains, moving them to eighteen and eleven. They secure a top position as the Apollos continue to fall. They move to 16 and 13, which brings the Queen's Nobles with a chance to be able to get better than the Apollos. This brings a chance for the Windsor Whistlers to tie them. So this is this is bad. The Apollos definitely having a problem in Houston now. All right, goats at the squirrels. Angela Del Vecchio will not win her game as the goats continue to fall. 4-3, to three, they lose to the Squirrels, bringing both of their records to 14-15. and 15. Kendall hits his fifth homer of the season. Levine gets the save. Del Vecchio with the loss, and Beatty continues to try to be the best. Number one pitcher in the league with her 2.46 ERA. Even though she has a 6-5 and five record, she has been phenomenal for the Centennial Squirrels. The Memphis Kings... At or at home against the Kanata Koala. Let's see if Pablo Sanchez can get to Leo Wayne. They do win the Kanata Koalas and Villegas. 11 strikeouts in seven innings. They will upset. They will upset the Memphis Kings four to two. But nothing for Pablo Sanchez in terms of homers, at least. He had a two-for-three performance. He did have a walk. And the captain to Neil, two-run homer, was literally all they needed. That was back in the fourth inning, I believe. No, that was the ninth inning. So that was the go-ahead two-run homer for captain to Neil. Sosa almost ties it up with a run-scoring single off of Cattery. McCattery, my apologies. But then a double play. In the bottom of the ninth, ninth inning saves it for the Kanata Koalas as they move to 15 and 14. The Kings fall to 19 and 10. So this gives this gives people a chance to get first place back now. The Kings have fallen. Or at least they've they've fallen for one game. So let's see if they continue to do that. Pioneers at the Nobles. The Nobles again, 12 and 2 at home. 12 and 2. Make that 13-2 and two as Mikey Thomas flexes his muscles. A two-homer performance for Mikey Thomas. The catcher of the Nobles comes through, and the Queen's Nobles are now 17-12. and 12. The team everyone loves to boo for some reason continues to roll as they barrel through the Portland Pioneers. Oh, man, numbered 11 and 12 for Mikey Thomas. I think that puts him in a tie for homers now. It does. Shovel Bryant from Houston and Mikey Thomas have the share of the home run lead now. <laughs> oh, that's great. All right, the big ones. The Coral Springs Manatees at the Bismarck Mythics. Both teams not doing very well on the road or at home. This is Ryan Tetra versus Randy Johnson. And the winner is going to be Ryan Tetra. Well done. 
the Bismarck Mythics take down the Coral Springs Manatees 5 0. A flawless performance from Dishnet, bringing in seven innings, nine strikeouts, three walks, three hits, and the Manatees back him up with an Alfonso Soriano and Eric Von Kohn home run. Well done by the Bismarck Mythics, keeping what little playoff hopes they have alive as they take down a top seed Coral Springs Manatees ball club. That's impressive right there. All right, let's see if the Giants can keep going or if one of these teams wants to fall apart. This is the Whistlers on a two-game losing streak versus the Giants trying to resurge back up to 500. And the winner is going to be the Windsor Whistlers winning it in extra innings. Both clubs couldn't win it in the 10th as Peavy has two home runs for the Toronto Giants. But they will fall 4-3 to three to the Whistlers. And, um, yeah, that's unfortunately probably going to be our season. I don't think the Toronto Giants have a chance at playoffs now. I, I, I don't think we're going to be able to make it at this point. So now it's just for the respect of the rest of the league at this point. As a stream long manatee diehard, this hurts. <laughs> don't worry, you've had your fun. And you'll keep going. The manatees are definitely playoff bound. They are one of the best teams in this league. All right? So don't worry about that. You're, you're just fine. Windsor Whistlers have now tied up the Houston Apollos at 16 and 13. Benedict, uh, Abenduct, sorry, <laughs> had a good performance. Seven innings, one run, 12 strikeouts. Dropped the ERA down to 1.97. So a good performance from him. The Marmots are going to be away at the Cluckers. Let's see who wins this matchup. The Cluckers will win on a walk-off. Nicely done by the Can excuse me, by the Kansas City Cluckers. It was a walk-off solo home run for Dunkel. No, single? Wait. Walk-off solo home run. Oh, versus Dunkel. My apologies. It was the home run from uh Holzman. This is Alan Holzman. This is the closer. The closer literally <laughs> wins it for himself. Oh, man. That's a first. Um, that was his third plate appearance ever. And um, Holzman decides that this is the time to finally show off the, the power that he had been hiding the entire time. So the closer comes in, keeps the game tight as they go into the ninth inning. And then wins it for himself. Oh, Abenduck didn't have a a walk for his first, what was it, seven or eight starts, I believe? No, four. My apologies. His first four starts, Abenduck did not have a walk. He has had walks since then. He had another spree of four games where he didn't have walks given up. But, uh, yeah, Abenduck is one of the best submitted players we have. He, uh... He found out exactly what he needed to... Well, he had a clear-cut idea of what he was making. And um, that's just... That was just... I did not expect someone to max out just a couple key points and do that much of a good pitcher. So that is the reason why we're thinking about... Well, no. That's the reason why we are... That's the reason why we are changing the form. Because it's a little bit uh, wonky when you know exactly how to... to input a player all right swatters versus the robins yes the swatters want to get to 16 and 13 tie up the whistlers tie up the apollos let's see if they can do it they can't oh they, they can you're right they can woot woot it takes till the 15th inning but the swatters come back in the ninth and then win it pretty much in a whole nother ball game homers to troy gloss heather quinn Beltron and Mills, as Mills even gets player of the game, but the Swatters win it in 17 innings. Oh my gosh, they used everybody. Everybody got used. They are going to be so tired for the next game. Oi. Uh, that might be a problem, actually. I haven't seen a 15-inning game before. Um, oy. technically we haven't had very many sucky submissions, if you want to call them that, 
a lot of people made exactly what they wanted. And we allowed people to make pretty much any character they wanted in terms of hitters or pitchers. Some people wanted more fireball pitchers. Some people wanted more control pitchers, you know, extreme ground ball, a little bit of velocity, more stamina, a lot of control. So you've got people who have different submissions for different areas and everybody is actually played. There is nobody out there who is not being played at least not the submitted players. There are a couple of free agent players who got uh, who got released because the teams had to keep themselves to 13 players. But everybody has been played. So it doesn't matter if your player is elite, elite submission and you're like perfectly submitted um, or if you submitted an average player. Everybody's been playing. So it's been fun. Sure, McGavin did win that game. Yes, he moves to eight and three. Woo! So, he pitched on the 5th, and he had to come in as relief here for the 8th. So, I'm hoping that he's going to be okay to go on his next start, which should be in, what, 4 days? I think he'll be fine. <laughs> I, I hope so. So, standings after that m amazing 15-inning performance from the... From the uh, that was from the Swatters. Moves them into a tie. There we go. So, the Lansing Robins are officially our second team eliminated. Which means the Giants and the Marmots are very close to also being eliminated. We're, they're probably at like a one game elimination number at this point. The Memphis Kings technically do have a five game magical number. They're pretty much guaranteed to make playoffs alongside the Virginia Beach Captains. Um, the Mythics go from 1.4% to 1.1%. I don't know why. Let's figure out what happens when we get to the next day. So, the next simulation is going to be on July 12th. Let's see if Shooter McGavin... Okay, they're all set. Okay, good. Whew. So, nobody's tired. They're going to be okay. Let's take a look at uh, pennant chances and the displayed information. All right, so the Mythics go from 1.4% to 1.3. The Goats are at 1.8, probably because their schedule looks a little bit uh, weaker than the Mythics do. The Cluckers and Pioneers have a 0.1% chance of making it into playoffs. So, basically, the Marmots and Giants, they're... They're pseudo-eliminated. They're basically eliminated. Um, but we'll see if the Cluckers and Pioneers can keep their 0.1% chances. <laughs> the Memphis Kings are fairly guaranteed to make it into playoffs at this point. They were a little bit under 100%, but now they're back up to 100%. So I don't see them not making it. The Captains, again, right behind them. One game out of first place. The Manatees, Ducks, and Nobles in a tie for third through fifth place. All around 80%. The Manatees actually have a slim chance that if they continue to fall, they could drop out, but I just don't see that. We have five games left. They have to play the Squirrels, Nobles, Giants, beat, uh, the Captains, and the Swatters. So actually, there is a chance. They could lose to Bosworth. Maybe the Nobles take it to them. I don't see that, but maybe Abbott can definitely take it to them. And then Shooter McGavin's been hot recently, so they could lose their last four games, potentially. But, well, that, that would require them to... They'd end up going, what, 18 and 16? I think they'd still make playoffs at that point. Don't you put the, <laughs> don't put the evil in the Manatees. I'm certain... I'm certain they'll make it, guys. I'm certain the Manatees are going to make it. They've been a very good team all season. They have Randy Johnson for Pete's sake. They've got Randy Johnson, Dontrell Willis, Larry Walker. I mean, they haven't been doing well with, like, Marty Cordova. But Schlobotnik has been one of the most fastest players in the league. 13 stolen bases. I don't think he's actually leading the league in stolen bases anymore. <laughs> the curse has been applied. It's too late. It's it's already on them. Pete Wheeler has the stolen base category right now. 18. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Let's see what happens. Let's look at the mail really fast here. 
Troy Gloss did well. Sammy Sosa got player of the week. Okay. All right. Sammy Sosa coming out of nowhere with a player of the week. Oh, uh, you guys want to look at P uh, Pete Wheeler really fast? There you guys go. So Pete Wheeler hasn't been getting the batting average up, but the uh, stolen bases, whenever he gets on base, he steals second and third. Oh, unless you're looking for Pee Wee. I know somebody, whoops, hold on. My apologies. I know somebody did submit a Pee Wee It McGee. This is Pee Wee McGee. If this is the person you were looking for, this is your player right now. Not too bad. Good second baseman, very good air, uh, double playability. Been getting some good hits. Lots of, a uh, good amount of, uh, doubles to back up the hits at this point. Three for three on the stolen bases. Uh, or three for six, sorry. Not bad. This is, uh, one of our more average submissions. This is when you try to cover all your bases instead of having a couple weaknesses and having some pretty good, uh, Instead of trying to, you know, go all in on one subject, uh, you can try to balance it out more. And this is the kind of result you're going to get. So this person did a lot of fielding. But you've got good speed, good bunting, good contact. You know, you're going to bat pretty average, and your rear war is going to be right about what league average is. So, you know, hey, it's, it's not a bad submission. It really isn't. All right. So for today... The big matchup for today is going to be the Apollos at the Swatters. We're going to see the Manatees home against the Squirrels. The Nobles are going to be on the road against the Goats. The Mythics go up against the Warlocks. The Whistlers are going up against the Captains. Oh, nice. Let's see what happens there. Uh, we're also going to be seeing, ooh, the Ducks versus the Kings. Oh, that's a big matchup right about there. 17 and 12. Ducks versus the 19 and 10 Kings. So let's start with the big one. Swatters at home against the Apollos. This is Evan Screwball versus Shooter McGavin. And the winner is the Houston Apollos. Tim Gross tried his darndest two homers, his seventh and eighth of the season. But it cannot prevent the Apollos from winning five to three. Bringing the uh, Apollos up to 17 and 13 and the Swatters down to 16 and 14. Oh, that is sad. Great performance from Tim Gross, who's had three home runs in his last three games, five RBIs. He's raised the batting average. Oh, he hasn't raised it technically. It's, he's flirting around 322. Very good performance from him so far this season. 1.6 war. Excellent performance. From Tim Gross. But uh, yeah, it looks like Griffey and Screwball were just better than the rest of the Swatters team. And they were able to do a good job. I wish I could remember what my pitcher was named. Oh, dear. <laughs> it's not Screwball, is it? <laughs> it's not Evan Screwball, is it? Anywho, the Toronto Giants are going to be away against the uh, Portland Pioneers. This is yours truly versus Doc Holliday. Oh, we lose 2-1. to one. I have a fantastic performance. Eight innings pitched, five hits, two earned runs, 12 strikeouts, but Doc Holliday outduels me. I moved to 2-7, and seven, even though I dropped the ERA down to 4.50. And the Toronto Giants have been, I believe, eliminated. The Portland Pioneers move to 14 and 16. The Toronto Giants have officially been eliminated at this point. The Squirrels at the Manatees. Ramona Bennett versus Betty Houston. Fabic hits a homer in the Centennial. Squirrels, unfortunately, overpower that solo homer for Fabic as they take down the Manatees 8 to 1. Houston absolutely dominates the Manatees. Bennett cannot keep the team going forwards, and the Manatees fall to 17 and 13. That's not a good sign. That's the team you need to win against right there, especially at home. That is not a good sign. Oof. Squirrels move to 500. Manatees 17 13. That ties them with the Houston Apollos, though. So they still are in a good position. But, uh,. That's not a good sign. You gotta be able to do better than that. 
All right, the Queen's Nobles looking to move to 18 and 12 against the Durham Goats. Ed Barker versus TJ Lowerman. And Lowerman says no. The Durham Goats come back in the ninth, come back in the 10th, and they take down the Queen's Nobles 10 to 6 on a slugfest. Amir Khan gets destroyed for the first time all season. Oh my gosh, homers to Kwan, Unger, Nagasala, and he who must not be named. <laughs> As he who must not be named is also on the top of the board, but can we? <laughs> Anywho, good performance right there by the Durham Goats to keep themselves at 500. The Nobles fall to 17 and 13 alongside the Manatee, so they can't reach up to the stars to join the captains and kings at the top of the standings. That might be a big loss right there for the Nobles. All right, Maria Luna versus Wasarsis. Whistlers at the captains. Big game right here for the captains, and they will lose it. The Whistlers win it in the 13th inning. Homers to Ivan Rodriguez and Jimmy Rollins as the Whistlers prevail over the Beach uh, Virginia Beach captains. Four to three. Another hitter's slugfest. But technically not so much in the runs category, but in the hits category, especially. Wow. That was a lot of hits. 24 hits. I mean, we've had some hits today, guys. We've had 25 hits. We've had 21 hits right there, eight, uh, 16 hits, and then nine. <laughs> the, the one team that did not do much hits at all. All right, so that's going to be interesting. The Virginia Beach captains definitely needed to win that game right there to be able to keep the Whistlers out of the top part of the standings because the Whistlers have abinduct, and we'll see what happens. You pulled diamonds? Diamond Kershaw's out of the two drops so far? <laughs> Maybe the game's trying to tell you something, Poomph. I, I think the game's trying to tell you something. All right. Mythics away against the Warlocks. This is a big game for the Mythics. You cannot lose this game right here. They cannot lose this game. And they will not. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nine runs scored by the Warlocks as they threaten all the way till the end against the Mythics. But the Mythics prevail 13-12. to 12. So this is offense day, guys. If you wanted to know where the offense comes in for this league, welcome to offense day. 13-12 uh, to 12 victory for the Mythics. They score eight runs in the fourth. The Warlocks score nine runs in the eighth. They had a total of 30 33 hits. Homers to Soriano, Rodriguez, and Lewis for the Bismarck Mythics. That's 9, 9, and 10. Homers to Estrada, Benson, and Gonzalez. That's Alex Gonzalez, by the way. The last pick of the draft almost, Alex Gonzalez. So, wow. Five RBIs for Soriano. Absolute slugfests today, guys. What happened? It's like the, all the pitchers are tired or something. What happened? All right. Bobby Bullgreen versus Nick Jai. This is the uh, second start for Nick. He came in and actually got the win against the Downey Ducks in the last game for the Koalas. He is their replacement number two starter after their first number two starter was failing. So uh, they have put Nick Jai in as their starting pitcher number two. So let's see if the Kanata Koalas can keep it up. This would be a great opportunity. This would be a good moment. A fantastic, spectacular opportunity. Pablo. Hint, hint. Pablo. 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 Pablo Sanchez hits home run number nine. And Big Fly hits home number five for the Kansas City Cluckers. But... The Kanata Koalas move to 16 and 14 as Jai gets his second win of the season. Pablo Sanchez hits home run number nine, as I said before. He ends up going three for four for the day. Pablo is getting hot, guys. This is not good. I mean, I want this to happen, but this is not a good idea. 
the Koalas do not need a on-fire Pablo Sanchez moving into playoffs. All right? You don't want to face off against Pablo Sanchez if if you uh if you have to play against the Kansas uh, the Kanata Koalas in the first round. I would hate to be the person who has to throw any pitcher against Pablo Sanchez. The new goal, beat Pablo Sanchez in homers. I mean, sure, that's a pretty good easy goal. He's got only nine home runs, and the league leader in the league right now has got 12. Bryant and Thomas still leading the league of 12 home runs. But Pablo Sanchez has now had back-to-back, well, though, sorry, two home runs in his past three games. So definitely a goal to have. If you can beat Pablo Sanchez in home runs, that's a good goal to have. All right, the big one. The big game of the day, ladies and gentlemen. The Downey Ducks at the Memphis Kings. Nancy Chin versus Tim Hudson. One of the best number two pitchers in the league is Tim Hudson. And the Downey Ducks will fall 4-3. to three. Tim Hudson gives up individual runs in the first three, three innings. But the Kings retaliate for two runs in the fifth, two runs in the sixth, and they win it 4-3. to three. The Ducks have two airs. Jay Green hits home run number eight. Felgate hits home run number six, as does Sammy Sosa. And the Memphis Kings move to 20 and 10. The Downey Ducks fall to 17 and 13. The standings are getting so, so mixed up now, guys. The Robins and the Marmots, the last teams on the list. Let's see if the Robins can make the Marmots go home eliminated. They will not. The Marmots win 8-1, to one, keeping their playoff hopes alive? Question mark, question mark? Yes, just barely alive for one more day. As the Marmots get a homer from Ralph, her second. Vaughn hits a homer for the Robins, his sixth of the season. That was the only run support they got. Takojo does not do well in his second start, unfortunately. Even though he did go six and two-thirds, he did give up five runs. So, unfortunately, Takojo couldn't hold together for game number two of his season. But uh, good to see the Marmots advancing one more day. So, Benson was player of the day today. I'm surprised. I would have put it to... Uh, I would have given it to Soriano, personally. All right. So, standings. As we move into July 15th. This is our standings, ladies and gentlemen. The Giants, Robins, and Warlocks have been eliminated. Nobody has clinched yet. Nobody has officially clinched. I think the Memphis Kings are probably going to be the first person to clinch. Technically, we have a ton of teams at 17 and 13. Five of them. The Apollos, the Nobles, the Whistlers, the Ducks, and the Manatees. All at 17 and 13 winning record. We have the Swatters and the Koalas looking in from the outskirts, trying to get into cracking that group. A couple teams at 15 and 15, that's the Squirrels, Mythics, and Goats also trying to do the same thing. The Koalas have a four-game winning streak. The Mythics have a three-game winning streak. The Squirrels have a two-game winning streak alongside the Whistlers. We'll see what happens. Today's baseball games, after we look at the... Aha, Pablo Sanchez gets player of the week. He batted 7-14, 5 for 7, a homer, 3 RBIs, 3 times scored. Pablo Sanchez is getting warm. And that should be all I have to say about that. All right, big matchups today. We've got uh, Greg Maddox versus Pedro Martinez. That's the Marmots versus the Apollos. We're going to see the Kings versus the Cluckers. Warlocks versus the Squirrels. Swatters away against the Whistlers. That's a big game right there. The Whistlers need to win that. The Goats at the Giants. Mythics are going to be on the road against the Ducks. That's another big game. Tetcher, Dishnet, you got to come through right here. You're up against Jay Green. 10-2 and two, Jay Green. That's going to be a tough one right there. The Manatees away against the Nobles. Oh, man, the Nobles. 13-2 and two at home. The Nobles do not lose when they play at home. If they get home field advantage for most of the playoffs, they're going to be dangerous. On top of that, we have the Pioneers versus the Captains. This is going to be Hamilton versus Abbott. And then lastly, the Koalas look to continue their moving forward with their ace and Pablo Sanchez. The Legas is their ace, looking to push that strikeouts number over the 200 mark for the season. As he goes up against Grace Tipton and the Robins. 
The Koalas looking to go 17 and 14 for the season at this point. Let's get started at the top, guys. This is going to get real intense. Marmots at the Apollos. And the Apollos barely squeak by with the victory 3 to 2. Greg Maddox has a wonderful performance as Pedro only goes five innings. He gets blown up in the fifth inning. I don't know if he was injured or if he just struggled in the first two innings. But Greg Maddox almost, almost pulls the Marmots through. I believe this officially has eliminated the Murfreesboro Marmots. As they fall to the Houston Apollos 3-2, uh, Marks and Heffernan had home runs. Heffernan did a really good job for the Apollos. All right, the second big game of the season. This is the Cluckers. This is their last chance at before elimination, and they're playing against the number one team. Poor Cluckers. Let's see what happens here. Leah Wayne versus Todd Xavier. And, um... Uh, uh... Okay, we're just gonna say the Cluckers got eliminated. Let's just, um... We're just going to say that they got eliminated. Just, oh gosh. Yeah, just a little, a little bit. Just, just a little bit, guys. Um, oh man. Oh. <laughs> oh man. Oh. Oh my. Woo! Yeah, we're just going to move on from that game. Wow! That's the game, uh... They got clocked up bad. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, good golly. Woo. Yeah, that's a way to get eliminated. If you're going to go out, go out big, I guess. Um. So, yes, Cluckers lose their game 20 when to when. Wow. Yeah, that's going to... That's a tough one to eat right about there for the Cluckers, unfortunately. All right, Warlocks away against the Squirrels. Squirrels really need to win this game too, unfortunately. Yeah, one homer for the Memphis team out of 21 runs scored. They only have one home run. That's amazing. All right, anywho, sorry. Squirrels really need to win this game. They've got two of the best pitchers in ERA coming out right now outside of Abenduct. This is 229 Hellerman versus 246 Beatty. This should be a low run scoring game, and I say that and I probably am going to jinx the entire thing. Well, it was low running scoring for one of the teams. <laughs> Nine runs in the eighth inning. So the offense is suddenly all alive in our league, ladies and gentlemen, as the Squirrels destroy the Warlocks 13 0. They move to 16 and 15. Calumpkin Jr. has a home run and a 4 for 5 performance. Beatty continues to just drop the ERA down lower and lower. 2.287 and 5 record for Beatty as she goes 8 innings. Woof. That's a good performance right about there. All right. Let's see if Abenduct can take down Harding and the Swatters. The Swatters are on a bit of a roll right now. So are the Whistlers. It's blowout day. Let's see if the uh, whist if the Swatters can get any offense against Abenduct. And the answer is they do, but not enough. The Whistlers will win seven to four. Abenduct does give up a couple of home uh, a couple of runs in the third and fourth inning. His ERA goes up to two point zero one, but. He does make the Windsor Whistlers win. Good performance from the Whistlers offense, scoring seven runs on 14 hits. Conine with his fourth home run of the season. And the uh, save going to Glass, of course. So some big-name teams are winning their ball games: The Whistlers, the Kings, and the Apollos, all winning games. Yeah, unfortunately, that's going up against the best pitcher in the league, potentially. That's just really tough for a Swatters team right there. That's a that's a hard, hard team to get over when it comes to, you know, the number one pitcher. I mean, sure, you, you, you could be going up against Jay Green, who can hit and pitch. But Abenduct is like, he's just, he's not going to give you up any walks. He's not going to hit batters. He's a full-on controlled ground ball pitcher. He's going to get everybody out on weak hits, and it's just hard to get anything against him. So I do not—I didn't expect anything much different than that right there. All right, 
Giants home against the Goats. Let's see if the Goats can pull off a victory right here. And they do. A 4-3 to three victory over the Giants. The Giants are now 12-19. and 19. They were already eliminated, so no worries there. The Goats moved 16 and 15 behind Angela Del Vecchio as she goes to 4 and 7. Pujols had player of the game. Uh, I think he didn't hit any homers, though, so it was just a good performance from Albert. How do I have a 3 and 10 record for Pounder? The problem, dude, is our offense. The offense of the uh, Giants is pretty much non existent. We have Delgado batting 188, Phillips batting 208. PV batting 161. I mean, <sighs> Bajin's not bad, but he's batting 171. I mean, Levi Brock was our first overall pick. This was our number one overall pick. Very good outfielder. He's batting 351, but he doesn't make up for our lack of offense. So that's just, we just got put on a team that has absolutely no offense to back us up. So that's what happens. All right. The Bismarck Mythics. Away against the Downey Ducks. The Downey Ducks are 12-3 and three at home? Wow. So the Ducks should win and the Nobles should win. This should be easy victory for both ball clubs. But let's see if Dishnet can put a stop to that. He can! Technically, the win goes to Marky Dubois. Or, no, Dubois. Fine, Dubois. It's Dubois. Okay, guys, it's Dubois. It's the boys for me, but it's Dubois. But the Bismarck Mythics win. I don't know why Tetcher didn't actually get the win in this game. He went five and two thirds of an innings of an innings pitched, 109 pitches, seven strikeouts, five walks, three hits, but a shared shutout for the Bismarck Mythics as they drop the ducks. The downy ducks are dropped. <laughs> and they uh the Bismarck Mythics win one nothing. On the solo homer by Eric Von Kolm. Second homer for Evie Cine C2 in the chat. Congratulations, you're the only run support for the game. Gagne gets save number seven. Excuse me. <clears throat> save number seven for Gagne. He drops his ERA down to 1.42. Wow. So let's see if the Nobles can keep it going with the upsets. Because this would be an upset. Randy Johnson versus Tiffany Bosworth. And they do. Four runs in the eighth inning for the Nobles. As they take down the Coral Springs Manatees. Randy Johnson still gets player of the game. Khan recovers and gets the save. Uh, recovers from his last blown save, that is. The Queens Nobles are now 14-2 and two at home. Talk about a home field advantage. That's that they have one more game at home, guys. That's that's it. They have one more game at home, I believe. And then the rest are on the road. But they've won almost every single game at home as they beat the Manatees 5-3. to three. No home runs for either team. All right. The Portland Pioneers looking to stave off elimination against the Virgi Virginia Beach Captains. Cody Hamilton versus Earl Abbott. And the winner is the Portland Pioneers. We're getting more and more people involved in the middle of the standings as the Portland Pioneers offense explodes with 10 runs on 18 hits. Homers to Mike Piazza. And is that Tyler? No, Thomas Rose. I don't think this is a submitted player, but I think it is. I don't recall that being a submitted player. Star Moonbeam had her second homer for the Virginia Beach Captains. Abbott had his third. Peters, his 11th homer. And Epps, his fifth. But the Virginia Beach Captains fall to 18 and 13. And the Pioneers, I think they keep their chances of at least not being eliminated. They do by at least one more day for the Pioneers at this point. So that'll be interesting. All right, the big one. We want to see if Pablo and the Koalas can keep going. This is Juan Villegas. Yes, this game is downloadable. If you type into chat, let me just type in hash, uh, exclamation mark backyard. You can download the quick start for this entire league and play it yourself. You are absolutely allowed to do that. This is the league. Uh, we have it based off of right after the draft. 
Um, if you want to, uh, just, uh, I mean, I don't, I probably would not, would recommend not to do the, uh, rescheduling of the fans draft. In the Discord, there's another quick start before the draft, if you'd prefer that, but this is the one after the draft, so you guys can play along with me as we go through stuff. All right, the big one, the Koalas at the Robins. The Koalas need this. This needs to be a win right here for Villegas. And they do get the win. Villegas gets the win, moves to 8 and 6 of a 2.93 ERA. A good performance from the Koalas as again, yes, they win their 5th straight game. They take down the Robins 3 to 1. I don't see Pablo. Well, four, two for four performance isn't bad. A double and a single RBI and a strikeout. That's pretty good. He's still raising the batting average up. 323 for Pablo Sanchez now as Connolly and Woodruff have homers in that ball game. So, the standings as of right now, we have five teams eliminated from playoff contention. The Memphis Kings have officially clinched playoffs. They are one game away from clinching the top seed. That's huge. If you don't know, our playoffs are ladder-based. You want that top seed. You need the highest seed possible. You want to be in the top three. Do not be in the bottom three. So the Memphis Kings getting a ton of buys and then being able to only throw Pedro Martinez in a championship game would be massive. That would be a huge advantage to the Kings because that means whoever finishes in second place has to throw their ace in game one to get to the championship. So you're playing most likely a per a team's number two starter against Pedro Martinez and the uh, and no no that's not Pedro that's Leo Wayne. That's Leo Wayne you'd be going up against. Ooh. I mean, technically, the Kings wouldn't mind finishing in second place and letting Wayne and Hudson pitch because both of them have been flawless. But either way, regardless, I would still be very comfortable with Leo Wayne in a championship game versus trying to come back with a number two starter, which is what will happen for whoever is second. So let's see if people can get some more distance separated between themselves and the second place team's third place teams and other teams the pennant chase as we move into july 19th there are three games left ladies and gentlemen three games left the squirrels have a surprisingly 13.2 percent chance of making it into playoffs versus the bismarck mythics who have only a 5.1 percent chance is it because of their the teams they're playing against? That makes no sense at all. 13? Is that because they've... No, I don't understand why the Squirrels have a 13. Oh, I wonder if it's the head-to-head -head records. I'm going to assume that the Squirrels have beaten either the Manatees or Koalas uh, more than we realize. Speaking of which, though, the Koalas are officially... On the outskirts, they're actually tied for the last playoff spot. So the Manatees, Koalas, and Ducks are the representatives for the number six seed. That is all we have. Six teams advance to playoffs. You need to be in the top six to be able to get into playoffs. The Swatters and Mythics are right there. They're right behind them. The Whistlers have pretty much punched their ticket into playoffs. Basically, if you're 18 and 13 at this point, you're pretty much guaranteed to be in playoffs. It's just what seed are you going to get? What's the remaining playoff uh, schedule for the Koalas? The Koalas have to play against the Houston Apollos, the Windsor Whistlers, and the Portland Pioneers. Oh, no. You have to go up against Evan Screwball and the Apollos. Benjamin Abenduct and the Whistlers, and then Doc Holliday and the Pioneers. That's, that is a shame. That is an absolute shame. There is no way they're coming out of that. The Mythics do have to go up against the Centennial Squirrels, 
the Queen's Nobles at Queen's. So this is the 13 and 2 home Queen's Nobles, and you have to go there and beat them to get into playoffs. I'm sorry, Dishnet, but I'm not seeing it. And then you have to face off against me. So, you know, I'm definitely going to let you in the playoffs regardless. I'm just kidding. I'm never letting you in the playoffs. It's not happening. It's not happening. All right. Scores for today. Big games on the way. Captains at the GOATs. The GOATs need to win this. If they lose this, pretty much guarantees they're probably not going to make it in the playoffs. The Giants have a chance to upset the Manatees on the road. I don't think it's going to happen. The Downey Ducks had to go up against the Cluckers. The Cluckers were just eliminated, and it is Bowl Green, so the Ducks should win that. The Robins are on the road against the Kings. That's an easy win for the Kings right there. The Apollos are up against the Koalas. That's the big one. Screwball versus Nick J. The Portland Pioneers against the Louisville Swatters. Two of the resurging teams going against each other right about there. What's the best extra pitch to pick up? Um, I mean, technically it's the knuckleball, but I haven't seen many people pick anything else. So I I would prefer people to pick other stuff than the knuckleball because that's what everybody's picking. So, like, go for, like, I mean, actually, the circle change-up. The circle change-up might actually be better than the knuckleball, now that I'm thinking about it. A, a good circle change-up is actually really, really, uh, a really good addition to a team. To a, sorry, to a player, technically. Um, the circle change-up would be good. What else would be good at that point? Um... Even, like, a splitter wouldn't be too, too bad. If you're a fastball pitcher, the splitter's really, really good at that point. But you have to be a fastball pitcher. So, you know, hey. Yeah, that's basically the best ones right about there. Knuckleball, thrill chain, screwball. The spitball is technically the splitter. I just forgot to put the L in the, um, in the, in the spitball. <laughs> so I adapted spitball into splitter is what I basically did. All right. Sorry. I'm getting sidetracked. We've got a lot of games to do today, guys. Uh, again, so pioneers at the swatters, the whistlers are at the marmots, the nobles on the road against the warlocks. Hopefully they can win a game on the road finally. And then the squirrels at the mythics. That's going to be a big game for the last game of the day. So let's get started, guys. We've got three more days to get through, and then we are finished with the regular season. Wish the game had an Ephus. Yeah, the problem is that it's really hard to categorize an Ephus pitch. It just really is. Oh, major upset. A no-hitter. Wait, where has this performance been, TJ? TJ. Have you been holding out on us? What is this? What is this? What? 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 I... TJ, we need to talk. You can't be doing this on me like this. You can't be going, you know, an inning and a thirds, and then four and two thirds, and six and two thirds, and then throw out a no-hitter out of the blue. Like, come on. Seriously. You can't do this to me. It just can't. I can't be expecting a high, high scoring game, and then you just toss a nonchalant no hitter for me. Good grief. TJ Lowerman <laughs> from our own, our own studio, or from our own content, content development team, throws a no hitter in the first game of our day as the Durham Goats take down the Virginia Beach Captains. Three to nothing no errors no hits two walks it was two walks away from a perfect game for tj lowerman what on earth <laughs> where did this come from he has been i mean let's just put it the way it is he's been awful all season until now pretty much dropped his era a full point in the last two games so he's going out with style, at least, guys. Good grief. Good grief. 
So the GOATs are now 17 and 15. This puts them in a very good spot for playoffs. Let's see if I can match wits. And I don't. No, definitely not matching wits with a no-hitter. The Coral Springs Manatees destroy yours truly and the Toronto Giants 14 to 8. Uh, Pappas and Bennett hit home runs. I moved to 2 and 8 with a 5.01 ERA. Woof. That's a. Uh, that was not a good performance. <laughs> almost gained, I mean, I gained almost a whole entire half point. Over a half point at that point, so that's not good. Anywho, Coral Spring Manatees go to 18-4, and four, so they are back. Manatees once again back into the uh, an 11, an 11 hitter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit. Well, it's amazing how you can have a really good performance one day and then a really bad performance the next day. It really just depends on who you're playing against. Like the Manatees, high-octane offense team. You know, the Virginia Beach Captains, not so much a high-octane offense team from what I remember. They are much more about their pitching staff. So it makes sense that Lowerman's going to have a fun time against the Virginia Beach Captains, and I'm going to struggle really, really badly against the Manatees. So, you know, that's what happens. All right, Ducks. On the road against the Cluckers. Let's see if the Cluckers can take a game away from them. They cannot, as the Downey Ducks will score a run in the top of the ninth to win their ball game 3-2 against the Cluckers. The Ducks also 18-14. and 14. So we're getting everybody on the same page at the 18-14 and 14 record. Let's just go ahead and give the Memphis Kings this ball game. Yep, there we go, 6-3. Derek Jeter hit his fifth home run. Kirk Reeder had his second. Crockett gets the win. Uh, loss goes to Potter. Hudson does get player of the game, but he doesn't get the win. And uh, Chipper Jones has homer number six for the Robins. But uh, they do fall to 10 and 22 as the Memphis Kings go to 22 and 10. And the Memphis Kings have clinched not only playoffs, but the number one seed in the Backyard Project. Congratulations to the Memphis Kings. They will represent the number one seed in our game. And that is a massive statement right about there. All right, the Apollos on the road against the Koalas. Nick Jai and Pablo Sanchez looking to match the 18 and 14 record that a lot of teams are at. And they will not... Pablo Sanchez does his darndest, hits his 10th home run, but Shovel Bryant. Two home runs, numbers 13 and 14, showing off to La Secret Weapon. And the Apollos win it in 12 innings, 5 to 4. Shovel Bryant flexes his muscles, propels the Apollos to a 19 and 13 record and takes the koala's chances down a notch at making it into playoffs that's rough that's destructive for the koalas right about there you need to be 18 and 14 at this point like that is the cusp of playoffs you need to be there all right the pioneers at the swatters 16 and 15 swatters need to win this ball game McGavin needs to come through for them, and they can't. Neither team scores until the ninth inning. Radke gives up four runs to the Pioneers as they win 4 nothing over the Swatters. Both teams go to 16-16, and a 500 record, and that is going to put them both on the cusp of elimination. That is not what you wanted to see. For the uh, Swatters fans, unfortunately, that is that is devastating for your playoff hopes and dreams right about there. All right, the Whistlers. The Whistlers looking to go 19 and 13, matching the Apollos. They don't want to fall to 18 and 14. Up against the Marmots, and they win. Luna gets her sixth, sixth, sixth victory of the season. That is hard to say. As the Windsor Whistlers move to 19 and 13 on a 5 to 1 victory over the Marmots. Yep, the slug the Swatters are choking unfortunately. We'll have to see if they choke all the way till they die 
or if they can wrestle that back and maybe stomach a sixth place seed. I don't know. I, I think it's tough at this point. You're literally having to win every single game from here on out. The Nobles on the road against the Warlock. This is Ed Barker versus Kenny Kawaguchi. And they lose. The Queen's Nobles do not know how to win on the road as they lose 8-2 against the Warlocks. Tony Del Vecchio, Zen and Estrada have homers. That's Estrada's seventh and eighth homer of the season. And this gives team, some teams a chance. This is going to make it a little more interesting. We have more teams at 18 and 14. So this will be interesting now. So the last game of the day. Squirrels at the Mythics. Betty Houston, Brenda Marcotte. The Mythics need this. The Mythics need this victory. So do the Squirrels. And in the end, it will be the Mythics. Alex Rodriguez propels the Bismarck Mythics to a 3-2 victory. His 10th and 11th home runs for the season. Gagne gets his 8th save of the season. Drops the ERA. Well, actually, he didn't drop the ERA. He actually increased it to 1.57. Player of the day went to, uh, or player of the day technically goes to Lauerman with his no hit, two walk, complete game shutout, 14 strikeout. That's just ridiculous. And we shall advance to the second to last, the penultimate game of the season, guys. Three teams on the cusp of elimination. That's the Pioneers, Swatters, and Squirrels. And technically, technically, there already are. Seven teams, seven teams at 18 and 14. You need to reach that level. So if the captains, nobles, manatees, and ducks all win their ball games, we're going to see probably one or, well, no, up to six teams get eliminated today. This is the big one, guys. This is the big one. Vicky Kawaguchi had a good day. Five hits. Very nice. Lauerman, the complete game no-hitter. Conine got Player of the Week award. Five for seven, one home run, five RBIs. Congratulations to Conine. All right, let's check the playoffs and the pennant chase. So, the Squirrels, Swatters, and Pioneers are on their last legs. The Squirrels were supposed to be 18 and 14 by now. The Portland Pioneers were supposed to be 13 and 19. But they are now on their last legs. The Koalas, Goats, and Mythics desperately need to win these ball games. And then you get the big ones. The Captains are on a three-game losing streak. They could fall out of excuse me, they could fall out of contention. I believe the Nobles are home today, so they should win this game, but we'll see about that. The Manatees and Ducks are also potentially on a knife's edge right now. Wow, they thought the Memphis Kings should be 24 and 8 right now. 24 and 8. Yes, the Mythics have a 14.5% chance of making playoffs. That keeps going up and up and up. And I would love to see the Koalas and the Bismarck Mythics make it into playoffs because I love the color purple. But also because I think those would be just fantastic come-from-behind stories. But, as you guys can see, some really big games in the second half of our day. So let's get through the ones that are not important. Marmots at the Pioneers. Maddox versus Hamilton. Portland Pioneers win it. They move to 17 and 16. This staves off elimination for them for one more day. Good job right there by Seth Hoffman. Two home runs for Portland. A good performance at this point for them. Todd Xavier, Grace Tipton. Cluckers at the Robins. And the Cluckers will win. 9 to 1. Good performance from them. Colum. Or Col Colum. Beltre, Potter hitting homers. Again, 9-1 to one victory. The Goats and Swatters. This is actually a pretty big game right about here. The Pioneers won. You gotta keep pace. Del Vecchio versus Harding. And the Goats will win it in extra innings. And this should officially eliminate the Louisville Swatters from playoff contention. 
they officially have been eliminated as they fall 1-0 to the Durham Goats. Del Vecchio has a shared shutout with uh, Asher, I believe, as they score a run of the 10th inning to be able to win that ball game. And then the last one that doesn't really matter at all is the Giants at home against the Warlocks, Percy Pounder versus Amanda Hellerman. And the Warlocks destroy the Giants. Salem has a homer for Benson, his fourth. Toronto gets homers from Bacon Bits, his first of the season. And Keisha Phillips hits her sixth of the season. But they lose 15-5 to against Salem. Salem has been suddenly coming back-to-back -back victories against the Queens and Giants out of nowhere. And uh, they're, uh, they're tied for last place now with the Robins. So they're not the worst team anymore. They're tied. All right, the big ones. Let's first start with the Squirrels at the Ducks. This is the Squirrels elimination game. The Ducks need to win this. The Ducks need to win this to propel themselves into a playoff potential. And the Ducks will take down the Squirrels. 5-0 Jay Green moves to 11-3. A 2.18 ERA as he has, I believe, a shared complete game. Or a shared shutout against the Centennial Squirrels. Supernova hits his fifth homer of the season. Yep, Jay Green goes seven innings. Three hits, one walk, nine strikeouts. And Bud comes in for the rest of the game as the Dowdy Ducks move to 19-14 and and knock out of contention. The Centennial Squirrels. All right. Where to begin first? Let's do Leah Wayne versus Pedro Martinez. The Kings at the Apollos. This is a big game for the Apollos. They could really use a win here to take a little bit of a chunk away from the Kings. Take them down a notch. And to help them get potentially sole possession of second place. And they will take it! Leo Wayne is outdueled by Pedro Martinez. 6-1 to one, the victory for the Apollos. Homers to Richie Sexton. Number 10 for Ken Griffey Jr. And Tommy Pickles. Or is that Timmy? Tommy Pickles, his second home run of the season. We're going to save the Koalas and Mythics for last. The Manatees on the road against the Captains. Randy Johnson. Earl Abbott. This is for potentially a tie for third place. Both of these teams wants it. They both need it. But only the Virginia Beach captains will take it. Homers to Vlad Guerrero Sr., his 10th. Jimmy Rollins, his 6th. And Mickey O'Connor, his 3rd. Chico Pappas gets his, gets his 10th homer for the Manatees, but they fall 10-5. to five. To the captains, Abbott outduels Randy Johnson. Wow. What's amazing is Randy Johnson has not had a bad season, but he's only 3-5 and five with a 3.69 ERA. All right. So with that information, the Kings are first. The Apollos have clinched playoffs. The Apollos are your second team to clinch playoffs at least. They are at least guaranteed, I, I would imagine, at least the number six seed at this point. The Whistlers and the Nobles and, of course, the uh, Mythics and Koalas. So this is a chance now to put the Mythics and Koalas to bed or the Nobles and Whistlers will have problems getting into playoffs. So let's start off the Queens. Queens Nobles are 14 and 2 at home. The Mythics are 9 and 7 on the road. It is Tetcher time. 2.87 ERA versus Bosworth and her 3.62. Let's see if Tetcher can get it done. And the answer is no. The Mythics come back in the 9th inning, but they lose it in the 12th inning. Homers to Kevin Lewis his 11th of the season, and Mikey Thomas, his 13th. It was a walk-off single for Mikey Thomas, who was player of... No, he was not player of the game. Bosworth was player of the game. My apologies. 
But unfortunately, the Mythics fall to 17 and 16. The Queen's Nobles have pretty much stamped their approval to get to playoffs. 19 and 14 record. And let's do the last game of the day, guys. The Kanata Koalas and Juan Villegas versus Benjamin Abenduct and the Windsor Whistlers. 200 strikeouts for Abenduct, 202 strikeouts for Juan Villegas. This could be a fun game. And the winner is Benjamin Abenduct. Abenduct moves to 9 and 2, a 1.88 ERA as he takes down the Koalas 3 0. 8.1 innings pitched for Abenduct. Villegas went the complete game, 8 strikeouts. But the Koalas move to 17 and 16 alongside the Mythics and the. Who is it now? There's one other team, Portland Pioneers, at 17 and 16, putting them in a bad spot. In fact, no, that's it. Because of the fact that that was the one last game for a seeded spot, they have been eliminated from playoffs. The Pioneers, Mythics, and Koalas are done. We have eliminated three people today, which leaves just the manatees and the goats to try and take one of the fourth, fifth, and sixth seeds from the Ducks, Nobles, and Captains. Oh, this is going to go down to the wire. It's going to go down to the absolute wire. And we will advance to the last day of the regular season, ladies and gentlemen. This is it. This is for all the marbles. We're going to be seeing the goats, manatees, captains, nobles, ducks, Apollos. Well, technically the Apollos and Whistlers have clinched playoff spots. But we're going to see some, <sighs> some seeding matchups at this point. As the Whistlers and Apollos are both tied for second place. One of those teams is going to get second. One of them is going to get third. We're going to see if the Manatees or Goats can get into playoffs. The, let's see. Who's playing who? The Goats are playing the Marmots. The Manatees are playing the Swatters. The Whistlers are playing the Kings. The Apollos are playing the Cluckers. The Nobles are on the road against the Squirrels. And then the rest of the teams, basically it's just the Captains, on the road against the Warlocks. So let's get the rest of the teams out of the way that have no playoff contention. Koalas home against the Pioneers. Pablo Sanchez hits homer number 11 and propels the Koalas to at least an 18-16 and 16 record for the season. But they will fall. I believe they're going to be at least one game shy of playoffs. A good job right there, though, for Pablo Sanchez. Nick Jai did a great job coming in as the number two starter halfway through the season. Well, it's, you know, two-thirds of the way through the season. So we'll see about that. Oh, play-in games if there are ties? Hmm. I actually don't know if there's going to be tiebreakers because everyone's seated uh, by a certain thing. By like uh, the, by their record and then their head-to-head -head record. So there could be ties. We may have to look at that. Mythics at home against the Giants. Alex Murray pitches the Giants to a win. So the Mythics will fall to an even 500 record as the Giants take another game at the last second. Bacon Bits has his second homer of the season. Kevin Lewis has his 12th as the Giants win 5-4. Nicely done. Good way to end the season. I at least had a sub-5 ERA. I'll, I'll take that. I'll, I'll take that at this point. Okay. Any other games that had no consequence? I think everything else has consequences involved. So let's get started. The captains play first. The Virginia Beach captains against the Salem Warlocks. This is the captains looking for a clinch at a playoff berth. They need to win this ball, this ball game right about here with Cersus versus Kawaguchi. And they will win it. 13-5. Homer's going only to Peters, his 12th of the season. 
but the Virginia Beach captains behind 19 hits have clinched a playoff berth at a 20-14 and 14 record. Congratulations to the captains. They join the Apollos, Whistlers, and Kings. So let's move on to the next team that is potentially on the cusp of being clinched, and that is the Queens Nobles. They are 19-14. and 14. If they win this ball game, they clinch a playoff spot. And it would start to eliminate some teams, too. But the Squirrels say no. The Queens Nobles continue to have struggles when they are not home as they fall 7-0 to the Squirrels, who move to an even 500 record for the season. The Nobles are now 19-15, and opening up the doors for the Durham Goats and the Coral Springs Manatees to be able to tie them for the sixth seed in playoffs. Wow. Let's see if the Ducks do the same thing. This is the Ducks versus the Lansing Robins. I don't think the Ducks are going to lose this game, but they might. Let's find out. The Ducks will definitely not lose this game as they win 8-4. to four. Homers to Stan Olafson, 2. And Barry Larkin, also 2 home runs. Greg Vaughn had his 7th for the Lansing Robins, but the Downey Ducks have clinched and punched their playoff spot. As they are now officially in it alongside the Captains, Apollos, Whistlers, and Kings, and it leaves it down to the Manatees and Nobles, and the Goats, technically. Who wants to win their ball game? So let's first get rid of the other games we don't have to care about now. Cluckers at home against the Apollos. The Apollos win. 4-2. to Kenny Reed Jr. has his 11th homer of the season. Column has his 7th. Marty Big Fly has his 6th homer of the season for the Cluckers. The Cluckers finish the season 14-20. and The Apollos finish the season 21-13. and Whistlers against the Kings. This is to keep them from falling into 3rd place. The Whistlers would like to finish in 2nd, but in all honesty, I think you'd rather finish 3rd? Throw Abenduct in the first game, throw your second pitcher and hope you win, and then throw Abenduct again in game three, which would be the championship game. So I think they actually would prefer to lose here. But it's Maria Luna versus Tim Hudson. And in the end, the Whistlers prevail in extra innings, 8-7. to seven against the Memphis Kings, which brings the Memphis Kings to just a one-game lead. Not that it matters, but they only finish the season with a one-game lead over the Whistlers and Apollo. So there are definitely three elite teams in our league, gen ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man. Fabtron 7 had two home runs. Sosa finishes the season with 7. Gofinan has 10. And Munson has 8. But the Memphis Kings fall in extra innings. And now, the big ones. Can the Swatters play spoiler against the Manatees? Shooter McGavin versus Ramona Bennett. And the winner is the Louisville Swatters. The Manatees get eliminated by Tim Gross and the Swatters as they take down the Manatees 12-4 on 19 hits. And the Manatees are eliminated. So the Queen's Nobles desperately hoping and praying for a Marmots victory to stave off a tie or potentially not even a tie, but just a flat out loud um, loss of a playoff spot. Because I don't know what the Goats' record versus the Nobles is. How have they done against the Nobles? I need to see team versus team reports. Hold on. Hold on, guys. I know how to find this. Reports and info. Team versus team. The Durham Goats against the Queen's Nobles are one and one. So I'm guessing that if the Goats win this ball game, we are going to have a one-game tiebreaker which means I have to make some schedule changes because that's not going to work. <laughs> that's just not going to work. Oh, oh man, this is going to be interesting. All right, goats. 
on the road against the Marmots. TJ Lauerman coming off of his best performance of the season so far. His no-hitter against, I believe it was against the... It was against the Captains, was it? No, it could have been the Captains. It must have been somebody else. No, it was the Captains, wasn't it? But anywho, TJ Lauerman looking to get his team into a playoff position right here. And the winner is not the Goats. The Murfreesboro Marmots score seven runs in the eighth inning and spoil the Durham Goats' chances to get into playoffs. The Queens Nobles celebrate in Centennial after their loss as the Nobles will take the last seed in playoffs as the Goats and Manatees fail to tie records on the last day of the season. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is your one through six finishing teams. In first, the Kings. Second, the Whistlers. Well, actually, let's see who, who's going to win this matchup. Whistlers and Apollos, Ducks, and Captains. Who has the head-to-head -head victory between those two guys? The Whistlers and Apollos tied up. The Ducks and the... Who was it again? The... Captains, was it? Hold on, I gotta make sure I remember this now. Ducks and Captains, yes. And the Ducks own the Captains 2-0. So I believe there may be... There might be a tiebreaker for the Whistlers and Apollos. I don't think there is. There shouldn't be. There shouldn't be. But I'll see if there is, guys. But anywho, the Nobles will be 6th sixth, sixth in the playoff seeding. They will have to go the entire gauntlet, which I just don't see that happening. They don't win it when they don't win when they're away. They have to win when they're home. So they would have had to have finished first to be able to do this. So unfortunately, the Nobles are pretty much screwed. I don't think they're gonna make it. The Captains have a good chance. The Ducks have a good chance. The, I mean, everybody is on a winning streak besides the Kings. So the Whistlers, six-game winning streak at this point, definitely. One of the top contenders for this championship, as well as the Apollos on a five-game winning streak. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone's going to be okay with the... Uh, who needs winning streaks when you're the best team? That's true. I mean, all you have to do is win one game. You only have to win one game, so that's very true. That is very true. All right. Let's take a look at the statistics, guys. Before we end the stream, it has been almost exactly two hours. Perfectly timed. We will actually, let's go ahead and at least finish the day. Oh, look at all the achievements, guys. Look how good of a manager I was. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yes, so playoffs. Playoffs look like this. Oh, that looks so cool. Oh, that looks so cool. All right, all right. Ooh, I'm excited. I'm so excited. The Virginia Beach Captains will be home against the Queens Nobles. And then whoever wins gets to play against the Ducks. Whoever wins that game has to play against the Apollos. The winner of that plays against the Whistlers. And the winner of that plays against the Kings, who are rightfully on the throne awaiting any challenger to come and face Leah Wayne and their unstoppable offense. GoFunnin has been great. They've had good performances from Sosa, Felgate, Munson. Jeter's done well. Robinson has been stealing bases. And their pitching staff has been phenomenal with Tim Hudson and Leah Wayne. Oh, man. It definitely properly seeded the Apollos Mistress because if they had a true tie, the Apollos would have been listed first. I agree. Um, I think it wasn't head-to-head. -head. I think it was run differential. I think that's what it ended up doing was run differential between the two teams. I want to check that, but... Yeah, run differential makes them win. Head-to-head -head victories are important 
to start with, which is why the beach captains, the, the captains have to play against the nobles, because the ducks were 2-0 against the captains during the regular season. But if they're tied in the regular season on the head-to-head -head matchup, um, the whistlers win because of run differential. I believe is how MLB does that. And we're using MLB's tiebreaker rules. How did the Whistlers do versus the... Uh... Let's find out. How did the Whistlers do versus the Kings? The Whistlers against the Kings were 2 and 0. Oh. Now... Technically, that doesn't mean a thing because they're down a game. So the Whistlers don't have any ability to trump the Kings in terms of being first seeded. But the Whistlers and Apollos were both one and one against each other. So what happens is the game slots it based upon, you know, the fact that the Whistlers scored more runs and had a better run differential than the Apollos did. So it puts them higher up. Based on record versus the number one position? Oh, um, I'm not sure if we do that in... Because MLB can do that for, like, divisions, but we're in, like, a one division, one league. You know, everybody's kind of in one huge, just just one league kind of situation. So I don't think the game will uh, will do that. Oh, if you want the quick start, type in uh, exclamation mark backyard. That'll get you the quick start for this. So this has been great, guys. Oh, this is going to be fun. Because you know what we're going to do? You got to believe we're going to watch every single one of these ball games. We're absolutely going to watch every single one of these ball games. One, two, three, four, five baseball games are going to be played next Saturday. We're going to run through them as fast as possible. But we're definitely going to be watching these games. It's going to be interesting also to see what happens to certain teams. When they have to schedule, and I have to look at the schedule myself because I have to make sure we uh, we actually have enough time for teams to space out their starters. Otherwise, they're not going to have time to rest. But what's going to happen is teams are going to have to throw their ace pitcher. And then if they win, they have to throw their number two pitcher against the ace pitcher of the next team. That's how it's going to go. So you're going to see ace pitchers for game number one, Bosworth and Abbott. But then you're going to see with Sarsis if the Virginia Beach captains move on. Or you're going to see who? Barker? Yeah, Barker for game number two. If, uh, for, well, for round two, if the Nobles move on. So you have to, the advantage is for the Kings. The Kings have to wait. And then they just throw Leo Wayne against whoever wants to challenge them. So this could be really cool. That helped prevent teams like the Whistlers from being able to just rely on Abenduct to win because they'll be able to win round number four with Abenduct. I can almost guarantee that. But then they have to throw Maria Luna against Leo Wayne in the championship. They will not have time to get Abenduct back. And that's where the trouble's going to come in. You're going to have to have the number two pitcher going up against the Kings unless... Unless the Apollos manage to win their game and then beat the Whistlers, they would then have Pedro Martinez ready against the Kings. It would be a Pedro martinez Leo Wayne competition at that point. So you can, every other game, throw your ace. So the Nobles would be able to throw an ace here, an ace here, and an ace here. The Ducks and Whistlers are at a disadvantage. The Ducks can't use Jay Green more than once. That's a great question, Tim Gross. Would it be better to throw Luna in the fourth round and save Abenduck to go up against the Kings? That is the option. Should the Whistlers do that? If you're reliable enough with your number two starter, would that be okay? Would the, you know, for like the, I mean, technically the Kings would have been the best example of that. They had Tim Hudson, who was the best number two pitcher in the league. They would have been the team to do that. But... You know, the Ducks could look at throwing Nancy Chin game one and then save Jay Green against the Apollos. But I think the Ducks need to win game number one. That has to happen. They have to beat the Captains or Nobles. Whoever wins out of that game, they have to beat them just to get to the Apollos. And then again, the Apollos could do the same thing. They could throw Screwball against whoever is the number two pitcher coming out of here, most likely Nancy Chin. They could throw, uh, they could throw Screwball versus Chin. And then throw Pedro Martinez versus whoever the Windsors 
the Winds the Whistlers want to throw. So each team could change their strategy to try to mess with everybody else. Of course, outside of the first two teams, because they're going to throw their aces. They want to get to the next round. But the Ducks, Apollos, and Whistlers need to be smart about how they're going to play this. Can we pick, though? Um, you know what? Sure. I'm not going to let you guys pick the individual players, but as a group, as a chat, we will go through and figure out like what would be the smartest decision for each team to have. Because technically... The Ducks need to win. Like, that needs to happen. The Ducks need to win game number one. So I don't see the Ducks throwing anyone but their ace game number one. But, technically, once you get that first pitcher started, you're stuck with that rotation. So the Ducks would have to throw Jay Green, number two pitcher, Jay Green, number two pitcher. So they could do number two pitcher, but Nancy Chin isn't exactly an elite starter. You're going to have the number two pitchers from the captains, which is Wasarsis, and the number two pitcher from the nobles, which is Ed Barker. And the Queen's nobles are going to be on the road the entire time. So I don't think the nobles are going to win. I think it's going to be the captains. So if we assume it's going to be the captains and it's Wasarsis for game number two, unless the captains throw Wasarsis game number one and save Abbott for game number two, which is a possibility, you could see the... Uh, you could see the captains play on that away record for the nobles and just be like, look, you guys don't win on the road. You're 4 and 13 on the road. So you're going to lose. Wait, are they home? Wait, 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 wait. Why are they home? Why are they home? They should not be home. The captains should be home. Uh, can we put that back to where it was supposed to be? Let's see. Uh, I need to put the... I am blanking. I don't know why. Nobles. Retail games. Okay. Thank you. I was say, that's supposed to be the queen's... Yeah, the... The Queens shouldn't be home as the last place seed. There we go. Yeah, captains should be home. I hope that doesn't require me to do that for every single game. <laughs> if it does, we'll have to fix that. But either way, yes. Virginia Beach captains should be home against the Queens Nobles. And that's how it's set up now. Perfect. Okay. Woo. Had a little mild, mild freak out for a second there. Anywho. Anywho, guys. Let's take a look at some stuff really fast. Mike Piazza. Let's look at some statistics before we end the stream here, guys. Mike Piazza wins the bi the batting title. Mike Piazza has the highest batting average at 387, a 2.0 war season for Mike Piazza. Shovel Bryant gets the home run. Home run title for the season of 14. I would think if Houston throws number one versus the Ducks winner, uh, then Windsor should start the number two in their first match. Yeah, I think if we're going to do... Um, if teams are going to start throwing number twos instead of number ones for the first games, I think the second teams are probably going to do the same. Or at least they're going to mix and match it to match. Um, the Apollos are in a really good spot, though. The Apollos can throw Pedro and then throw their number two pitcher and then throw Pedro for a championship game. So I think they're in the best place out of everybody. I mean, of course, besides the Kings. The Kings are in the best place regardless. But anywho, Jay Mills had a good season. He was the best slugger and OPS player in the league. Ken Griffey Jr., though, taking the war leadership at 2.9. Pablo down in fourth place at 2.3. So Pablo did okay. He just didn't, he didn't perform as well as we were expecting pablo to do but he did have 11 home runs 11 stolen bases and a 321 batting average 664 slugging percentage he was on the list for sluggers um i might look at some stat lines but i also know that you guys want to see my exportation of stats so 
I might just do that and get you guys all the statistics in the Discord so you guys can look at all your stuff, all the season results at this point. Doubles went to Kirk Reeder. Gary Allen had triples of four, tied with Derek Jeter and Stephanie Morgan. Also, Suzuki and Pete Wheeler. Star Moonbeam had the most runs scored of 33. That's actually really impressive. She had a very good season. 15 stolen bases, which was not the lead. Kaz Cappy. Kaz Cappy with the come from behind. Stolen bases. 23 stolen bases for Kaz Cappy. Congratulations for that. That's a good one about there. 12 times being caught stolen for Levi Broke. Wow. 73, 73 strikeouts for Amir, for Ahmed Khan, 71 for Richie Sexton. Uh, Bryant had the most homers and RBIs. Tied technically with Greg Peters at 36. Pappas had 34. Griffey, 33. Mikey Thomas, 32. Fabic, 31. And Albert Pujols at 31. Albert had a decent season. The power wasn't quite there. Only five home runs. But uh, the 331 batting average, pretty good at this point. Anything else you want to look at right now? Fabic had the most extra base hits. 23 walks for Jay Mills. Kaz Cappy with 22. Nagasawa, 21. Todd Helton with 19 walks. Win probability added. Ken Griffey Jr., 258. Tony Gwynn Sr. from Windsor, 228. And Gofinan, 217. So the top three teams, Houston, Windsor, and Memphis, all had the best hitters for adding win probability. That's why they did so well. Looking at pitchers really fast, I see a lot of Benjamin Abenduct. Strikeouts, 214. He beats Villegas for strikeouts by the end of the season, just barely Complete games with five. Shutouts with two. Innings pitched, 134. His war was 6.4 for the season and a 1.88 ERA. Gagne blows up in the last couple of weeks and drops to 191, leaving Abenduct with the Cy Young potential across the boards. But he's outwitted by Jay Green for the wins, though. Abenduct finishes with 9 wins. Green has 11. And Bennett has 10. Jay Green showing off as a pitcher. Well done. Like, there's a point where, you know, you go 11 and 3 of a 2.18 ERA. The lowest home runs per 9 innings pitched. Like, there's a point where um, Abenduct is good. But it's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see what happens when we get to voting time. Strikeouts per walks, Bull Green, 30.5. He gave up 27 home runs, but he had 122 strikeouts and four walks. I think Bull Green gave up the least amount of walks out of anybody. He did. Bull Green gives up four walks for his entire season. This is where, you know, he's a great pitcher, but he gave up so many home runs. 27 of them. He would have been phenomenal otherwise. The whip for Abenduct was 0.78. Pedro, 0.81. Gagne and Del Vecchio. Angela Del Vecchio had a good season with her very low 0.6 walks. 13.1K, 0.9 whip, and 163 strikeouts. Angela Del Vecchio did great. A lot of really cool performances from a lot of really cool people. Pounder did have the most losses. 3 and 11, unfortunately, but only a 4.56 ERA, so his team just didn't give him any run support whatsoever. Just no run support. No homers and no walks, but he just couldn't do it. Man. And that's really sad, unfortunately. Takojo had the lowest BABIP against him. Nice. Seven holds for Nick Jai, who ended up becoming a starter by the end of the season. Had four amazingly good starts. Well, not so much against the Ducks, but he did win that game too. 
So Nick Jai did a great job. Uh, winning percentage, Tim Hudson had a 900 or a 90% winning percentage. Again, though, just the dominance by Abenduct. 17 starts, 17 quality starts. Hellerman had 15, BD 14, Green, Martinez, uh, odd 14. Nancy Chin had 13, and Harding had 13. For saves, I believe that was still Amir Khan. 13 saves. Luan Louie had 11, tied with McCattery from Kanata, and Sturges from Houston. So Khan for the Queen's Nobles. Definitely having a good performance for the season at this point. He had a 1.59 ERA. Actually, that's better than a... He actually is the ERA leader. I'm surprised he's not a part of that. But anywho, guys, that is going to be it for the stream. My apologies if you just joined us. We just finished up. This is going to be next week's stream, guys. We're going to go over playoffs. We're going to go through the entire playoffs. And we're going to probably play most, if not all, of these ball games. I will export... All of the statistics for you guys to be able to see in the Discord. So thank you so much for watching. This has been Episode 5 of the Backyard Project, The Winds of Windsor, as they came all the way back in the month of July. Six-game winning streak to finish second place. And we will see how all of your guys' players and these six remaining teams do for playoffs next week. So I will see you guys all there. Come on back and we'll watch... Uh, oh, I had the wrong title on this stream. It's supposed to be episode 5. My apologies. Uh, we'll watch playoffs next week. Have a great rest of your weekends, everybody. I will see you all next Saturday.